Hello everyone, I'm Lorianne King, money coach and co-founder of Dow Jones, and today I'm going to be talking about the story of how I bought my first investment property. Now, the truth is that I never actually intended to buy an investment property. This whole journey started when I just started to get the calling. I felt like, oh, I really want to buy a house. I was living in an apartment in San Francisco at that point in time. You know, my husband and I, we'd been married for a couple of years and I felt like I'm ready to, you know, start laying down my roots. I wanna own some property. And my husband came with me. We were gonna go look at some homes with the realtor. And, you know, I was totally new to this world. I didn't know if that meant that I'd hire the realtor. I didn't really know what that meant. And my husband was really actually not on board with the idea of buying a house. In fact, we go to an open house, we meet the realtor there, and the first thing my husband says to him is, I don't wanna buy a house. And the realtor asked why, and my husband said, well, honestly, I think it's kind of a racket. Like, you take out all this debt to buy a home, and then you keep putting money into the home, and then you only make money off the investment if you sell it, which means you don't have a place to live anymore. I just don't think that's a very good type of investment. And so the realtor, kudos to him, was like, oh, okay, you know, well, let's take a look around. And we started touring some properties with the realtor and it really was not very inspiring what you could get with the amount of money that we had to invest living you know, in the Bay Area, a very expensive part of the country. And in between you know, seeing one property and then driving to the next one, the realtor drives in his car and my husband and I drive in our car. And just before we get into the cars, the realtor mentions that a friend of his had just bought a triplex, like one town over from where we were currently looking. And the numbers worked out so that his friend was able to live in one of the units and then rent out the other two, which paid for his mortgage and paid for his own cost of living. As we're, my husband and I are on, we're driving to the next property, we're both very clear that we're just like, oh, well that is what we want to do. That sounds great. You know, I really wanted to kind of move into my dream home, but what I was seeing of what was available in the market in my price point, I wasn't gonna get my dream home anyway. And so I kind of said, all right, well, if my husband's on board for that, I can get on board for that too. And you know, I love a good investment. So we get to the next house with the realtor and we say, okay, that's what we wanna do. Just what your friend did. We wanna buy a triplex. We wanna live in one of the units and rent out the other two. And he said, okay. Well, due to the zoning, they don't come around very often, but I will keep my eye out for you and I'll let you know when I see one. And then he calls us the next day. And he says, you've got to look at this place. <laughs> and keep in mind, you know, I'd kind of been like dragging my husband through this the whole time anyway. He didn't want to buy a house. We were at the very beginning stages of starting to look for a place and even just like see what was possible. We'd met with this realtor just one time before. And now he's saying, you've got to look at this place. So we go, it's pouring rain. He takes us to an old Victorian, and I mean old Victorian. The thing is built in the 1800s. It's more than a hundred years old. And he takes us on a tour of this property. And the truth is this was not a place that I was super excited to live in, but the numbers on the property were fantastic. And it's really important when you are buying an investment property to buy it based on the numbers, right? I had to get myself out of the headspace I had started, which was, I'm gonna buy my dream home and this is gonna be a place where I'm super excited to live and raise my family and shift my mindset to, I'm making a financial decision. So I gotta look at the numbers and I have to make forecasts and predictions and expectations and calculate the ROI and understand how this decision is gonna fit into my overall financial picture. And so that meant instead of moving, you know, in my mind, I was about to take a step up, getting out of an apartment into a home, I realized instead of choosing to make a lateral move from a lifestyle point of view, I'm gonna still be living in an apartment. I'm just gonna own the building that the apartment is in. There were some sacrifices like that that I had to make where, now I'm really staying, actually the apartment we moved into was a little bit smaller than where I had been renting and it was a little bit quirky, like this was really a house that had been divided up into apartments and so there was only one closet in our entire apartment and it was in our kitchen and so it was, you know, it was just like, okay, this is not my dream situation but I'm doing this as an investment decision and in order to change my financial situation. Did it work? Was it worth it? And yes. You know, here's some highlights of how it shook out. Ended up buying that property. We had to move really fast to do it. It was a total 
whirlwind. You know, we were in a difficult situation because we're self-employed. We had to file our taxes and give them two years of history in order to qualify for a mortgage. And there were all these things that we were doing for the first time and we were doing them really fast because when you buy an investment property, a little bit different from just investing in a single family home is you are competing against other investors and other investors would have had way better opportunity to buy the property if we didn't move fast because they could have offered all cash, they could have waived contingencies, they could do things that we didn't have available to us. And so speed was really our ally and we moved really quickly in order to put that offer in. Getting the property, getting it I think uh, at basically asking price and we lived in it for just over a year. During that time, the rent that we had from our other two tenants was enough to cover the full mortgage of the property, and so we lived rent-free. So I kind of made this lateral move from apartment to apartment inside of a building that I own, but now it wasn't costing me anything. And we had other people paying our mortgage, building up equity in the property. And so that part was really awesome. We had to do things, like I say we, because my husband and I did this together and we co-managed the property. And we had to do things that were definitely outside of our comfort zone. There was a lot of new stuff we had never done before that we needed to do once we owned the property, including a large renovation where we had to replace half of the foundation of the house. And anytime you hear the word foundation and house, <gasps> is like scary because um, that's the foundation, you know, it's an important thing. And in this house we had half of it was like an old brick foundation and the house wasn't even attached to it anymore. And the contractor is like, all right, you're one earthquake away from your house just sliding into the street. And in California, there's earthquakes all the time. So we had to kind of swiftly do that project. And that was a large project that we, you know, we'd never overseen any type of renovation before. So there was a lot of learning and researching that went into that. We ended up needing to go into public media to rectify a situation with one of our tenants. That was really uncomfortable and new. So there was a lot of stuff that was outside of our comfort zone or that we had to do for our first time. We also ended up needing to evict tenants that were being disruptive and causing issues with our neighbors. And my husband and I are both like, we're just like very loving people. We want to take care of people. And so to go through that process and need to do that was emotionally really difficult for us. Another thing that happened during this time, like I said, we only lived there for a little over a year, which was not the plan. The plan was to actually be there for quite a bit longer. But during that time, my one of my businesses ended up taking off in a way that was pretty unexpected, but hoping it would happen, but I didn't know for sure. And I was able to save up another down payment quite quickly, especially because we had eliminated the cost of rent. And so we had very minimal expenses and now my income was going up. And so I was able to save a lot of the money that I was making and that made it possible to buy another home quite quickly. And so we ended up moving out of state and to try and manage it from a distance. And so we owned it for maybe a year and a half or so, like remotely where we didn't live near to the property. And it just got more and more difficult to manage it remotely, especially as we were dealing with tenant issues and trying to like, you know, move new tenants in, move tenants out, that it eventually became enough of a headache that we didn't really want to keep owning it. And it was a really good time in the market to sell. So we ended up working with a realtor who recommended that we do another renovation on the property to really maximize its sale value. And we took his advice and he was amazingly helpful. And this was one of the things I've learned about dealing with real estate is you need to find the people who are the best in their craft because it makes a huge difference. So because we did that renovation on the property right before we sold it, we were able to sell it for probably an additional $100,000 that we wouldn't have had had we just you know listed it the way that it was. And so all said and done, we bought and sold the property. We owned it for less than four years and that investment probably increased our net worth by about $400,000 between the money we saved from not paying rent while we were living in the property, the depreciation value from the home that we were able to deduct against our income taxes, and then the money that we actually made when we sold the property. So that was a pretty profitable investment for us. And some of the lessons that I learned are that fortune favors the brave. You know, we had to act fast in order to get that property, and that was super uncomfortable. Sure, we were gonna buy anything, and, and now we're gonna buy a home where multiple people are going to be living, and so it's just like, I knew in my gut it was the right thing, and I had to really trust that and I had to trust it so much that I kind of like talked my husband into it as well which was scary to feel like I was really responsible for this decision but I'm super glad that I trusted myself and like I said the investment worked out and I learned a ton in along the way. Another thing I learned is that things that you are unfamiliar with can feel scary 
but they're not actually scary things. It's just because it's unfamiliar. So for me, like applying for a mortgage felt really scary. I'd never done it before. Actually selling the property felt really scary. These were all just because they were new things, but just because they were new to me, it doesn't mean that they're new. Like people are doing this every single day, thousands of times a day all over the, all over the country. And so sometimes it's just like, you're just gonna do it and it, you're gonna be new at it. And that is why the next lesson I learned is that a trusted advisor is really worth their weight in gold. Now, when you're doing something like this, work with the experts and make sure you get people who are good. Get referrals. Like if you're investing in multifamily homes, make sure you work with an agent that does a lot of work in multifamily homes. You know, if you're applying for a mortgage, make sure you're working with a mortgage broker that's senior in their space. There's someone that can like move things along swiftly. You really wanna work with people who are in the top of their field because that can make the difference between a deal happening or not happening. Or in our case, like I said, the realtor that we worked with was really an expert in multifamily homes, knew how to maximize the property value before we sold it, really was the one who like mentored and educated us about why we should do that renovation before we sold it. And his advice was worth $100,000 to us. And another lesson is that you should expect for it to be bumpy. You know, when you're investing in real estate, especially like real estate that you are going to manage and be involved in, it's real, right? It's not a passive investment in the way that putting money into the stock market is, and then you just like see the value and it goes up and down and you decide when to pull it out. It's like, oh, this is a real building. Buildings have appliances and things that fail and you are getting your money from real people, real tenants. And so there are going to be the friction that comes with like real physical assets and the friction that comes with real people and the relationships that are there. And so this passive form of income is not entirely passive, right? There is work to be done. And when it comes up, it needs to be done right away. Like someone's toilet breaks. Okay, that's gonna be fixed immediately. <laughs> but then there are long periods of time where it is totally passive and we didn't have to do anything Thing and the checks just showed up on time the way they were supposed to. So it's not completely passive, but there, there are passive periods in it. So will I do it again? Will I have another investment property? I will invest in real estate again, but I will be doing it differently. I really love and believe in real estate as an investment vehicle, as a way that people build wealth. I think the recent stat I read is like 83% of millionaires do it through real estate. And I currently have a vacation property that was a part-time Airbnb rental. It's the real estate that I have right now beyond the home that I live in. But it does take work to manage a physical asset. And at this stage in my life, I have two young kids under three. Being called about someone toilet le leaking is actually just not a part of my dream life. It's not part of my dream life right now. And so that sacrifice that I was willing to make earlier, where I was like, okay, I'm making a lateral move here. I'm gonna live, stay in the apartment lifestyle. I'm willing to sacrifice part of my dream life, living this dream home in order to advance my financial future. I'm not willing to make that sacrifice at this stage in my life anymore. And I'm not really willing to make the sacrifice of needing to be on call to support tenants. And you know, if I'm gonna be a landlord, being a good landlord is important to me. And so I'm not gonna invest in real estate in that way. I'm now starting to invest in what's called a real estate syndicate as a passive investor. So truly a passive way to invest where there is a professional company that is finding the deals, managing the property, buying the property, overseeing the renovations, all the stuff that I was doing and my husband was doing on our small investment. I now wanna be an investor in a much bigger play where they're buying an apartment complex and I'm invested as just you know, one of multiple investors in that property. And, you know, there's some downsides to that. Like I won't have control over the property. I won't have control necessarily over when I get my money out of the property, but it's a passive way to stay involved in real estate, which is what I'm looking for. And those are my investment goals at this stage in my life. Obviously buying a rental property is not the right answer for everyone. In fact, it can be pretty tough. And I will do another video on things I wish I knew before I bought a rental property. But if buying an investment property is something that you are interested in, or I encourage you to trust your instincts. I'm really grateful that I invested in that property and another stage of my life, I think I will probably do that again and manage investments on my own. But at this point in my life, it just doesn't fit my investment goals. So I'm finding other ways to invest in real estate. All right, I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up, click subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I'll see you next time.